If you're wondering why the left have gone completely insane, perhaps it's because they were raised to be insane and now they're raising their kids the exact same way. Why in the world would a 14-year-old girl think that her world is ending because Donald Trump has been elected president? More importantly, why would she think her world is ending because of possible restrictions on abortion? She's 14. Are leftist parents truly raising their daughters to believe that their right to freedom is dependent on their ability to kill their own offspring in the womb? I'll raise my kids to believe that certain rights are sacred, the right to religious practice, the right to freedom of speech, the right to defend ourselves. The notion of teaching a little girl that abortion is the chief right women should expect from their government, or that their life is somehow inevitably impacted by laws cracking down on abortion, that's patently crazy. The fact that some leftists apparently teach their kids that liberty can be boiled down not to individual choice and responsibility for that choice, but to the ability to pay a clinic to kill a baby in the womb and then take it out, that's pretty disgusting. As the parent of a daughter, here's what I plan to tell her about abortion. I plan to say, sweetheart, when you get married and when you have sex and get pregnant, that will be the greatest joy you can experience. I know that because it was the greatest joy that your mom and I ever experienced. Your birth was the highlight of our lives. Your existence is a timeless reminder that God loves us and he loves you and that he favors us with miracles every day, none greater than your creation. You're beloved of God and your children will be too. Children are the greatest gift we can receive. To spurn that gift, to destroy another human life, is a great evil, no matter any countervailing concerns. And here's the thing, we're, we're religious, but even if we weren't, that lecture wouldn't change all that much. Children are the greatest thing in life, and they are lives, regardless of whether you're religious or secular. And suggesting that true freedom lies in the ability to kill children in the womb, it's just disgusting. I mean, it's gross. Come on. Propagandizing 14-year-olds with that suggestion, that's even more gross. But if you tell your kids that evil Republicans are coming in the night to raid your womb, it's no wonder they get hysterical when Democrats lose elections. So why do you think it's not about people in women's bodies and just about the separate life? Like, after the baby is born... How come when people don't care about them, they don't care where they have foster care, they don't care about the mother being poor? Like. Okay, I do care about the mother being poor, I do care about foster care. Okay, well, why don't you advocate for that, though? Because Planned what? Parenthood is supposed to prevent abortions. Because, I, well, Planned Parenthood doesn't prevent abortions. They, they do perform though. hundreds of thousands of abortions a year. They perform 300,000 abortions a year. They're the leading abortion bill in the United States. evidence for that, though? That they perform 300,000 abortions a year? From Planned Parenthood. That's my evidence. <laughs> They don't dispute that. No one disputes that. I'm not anti-birth control. Birth control is extraordinarily cheap. Okay, they're not the only people in America who provide affordable birth control. You can go get a pack of condoms down at the local CVS for 12 bucks. Yes, and it's true that most forms of birth control are also extraordinarily cheap on an annualized basis. Unless you have a severe problem, most birth control is very cheap and readily available. And I'm not against people going and getting that from Planned Parenthood. As you may have noticed, I'm mostly against abortion. If you want to go to Planned Parenthood and get a contraceptive, go for it. I don't care. I do care when you start killing babies. This is a problem for me. But what about in rape and incest situations? Okay, so this is a di okay. So yeah, here's the question. Yes. I mean, this is a long conversation. I'm enjoying it actually, which is why I'm allowing you to stay. But it's <laughs> but, uh, but it's but the the question of of rape and incest. First of all, important to note, rape and incest are not only a vast minority of of abortion cases. They're an extraordinarily low percentage of abortion cases. So if we can first stipulate that all the other abortions are bad, then we can talk about that other one. Can we do that? Are all the other abortions bad, or are those ones okay? And you're just using this as an excuse to make the other ones okay. They're all okay. Ah, good, someone who's honest. So, <laughs> who's the honest fellow, who's, who's, okay, yay, honest people, good, I like the honesty. Okay, so all abortions are okay. So, does the, so, the, so oh, a sign that I can't read because it has lots of words on it. Okay, so, I have one question for you and one question only on abortion. Does the vagina, the, the vaginal canal, magically confer personhood? Answer, does the vagina magically confer a personhood? Yeah, raised hands are okay. You, sir. No, no the first breath does. The first breath confers personhood. Okay, so if the baby is in the womb and is exactly the same size and has not yet breathed and you take a knife and you stab the baby in the head, a fully formed nine-month-old baby, it is not a human. The only thing that makes it a human is when it takes a breath. It has to independently breathe. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to stick to it, yeah, because I'm also pro-capital punishment and pro-selective Suicide. So I'm going to stick with it. Selective suicide? I assume you, I assume you mean elective suicide. I mean elective suicide. Elective suicide. Elective suicide. Okay. Yes. I'm not going to make someone commit suicide. Right. Okay. Okay. That's good, because that wouldn't be suicide. That would be homicide. Uh, so <laughs> so uh, that, that, by the way, I'm for capital punishment, too, because people who kill people should be killed. But babies who have not killed people should not. 
And this is my basic position on abortion. So let me just, so, but I'll get your answer because you're the one who asked the question. Are you willing to stipulate that all the other abortions are bad? Just rape and incest bother you? I mean, no, I believe a woman should have the right to abortion. Got it, so it's an excuse, right? So it's an excuse so that we can say that, uh, so that we can, we can take the marginal case and then say that the marginal case applies to all cases. Okay, that's, that's again, faulty thinking. But if you want me to answer specifically on rape and incest, here is my basic answer. Rapists should be castrated or killed. You shouldn't kill babies. End of story. But are they ever castrated and killed? Most rapists don't even get convicted. I agree, and that's usually the left side of the aisle because the left side wants to let them out after five years in prison. I want them castrated or killed. I'm telling you what my belief is. My belief is not public policy at the moment. But I think, would you agree with me on that one? Can we at least get a little agreement to finish this particular parlay? Okay. You, should rapists be castrated or killed? Well, yes. Okay, good. Yeah, okay, we agree. Thanks. As a woman and somebody going into the healthcare field, I personally don't, it's on your opinion on abortion. Um, I personally don't think that like I could have an abortion just because morally I feel like for myself it wouldn't be the right choice. Um, but how do you defend your opinion as a white, well-off, religious man? Um, how do you defend your, ha like, telling a woman what she can do with because her body? Because evil things are still evil, even if I'm a white, well-off, religious man. And good things are still good, even if I'm a white, well-off, religious man. So the, I mean, to, this is, the, this is, this is one of these, this is one of these identity politics points that I really, uh, I mean, I, I don't mean to come down harshly on you, I don't, uh, but it, it, it is a point that I really have serious moral qualms with. I, I think it's quite, quite terrible. The reason being that the people who were fighting against enslavement of black people were a bunch of well-off white men for the most part. Right? And those people were saying, this is a moral sin. This is a moral blot. They weren't living in the South. They didn't own plantations. They didn't live the lives of the plantation owners. They said, this is evil, and we are here to stop it. Right? When you see something that you think is morally wrong happening, especially when you're talking about the taking of a human life, like, listen, I think that, uh, I think that you shouldn't go around randomly killing homeless people. I just have this view. I'm not a homeless person. Most of the people who randomly kill homeless people are probably not of my economic strata, my religious view, or my, uh, I don't know whether they're of my skin color or not. I have no idea what the, what the actual sociological breakdown of homeless killer serial murderers is, but, uh, but I would suggest that my identity has nothing to do with what is right or wrong. And this is what Western civilization used to be about. Western civilization used to be about the idea that, yes, I'm not a woman in the healthcare field, but you and I can have a conversation about what's right and wrong because this is the nature of human reason. The nature of human reason, the nature of right and wrong, is that you and I can talk about what's right and wrong and that I don't retreat into my identity. If we can all retreat into our identity and our morality is now centered around that identity, morality doesn't exist at all. We break down into a society of fragmented atoms where I can't even say, like, you're torturing a puppy in your backyard. I have nothing to say about that. I'm not a white woman who's in the healthcare field. I'm not going to do that. I don't, I don't, I, I refuse to surrender the idea that I can have a moral stance on issues that are of concern to society and of concern to the, to the well-being of the United States simply because of the color of my skin or the nature of my genitalia. And honestly, I believe any view that feels differently is sexist, racist, and bigoted.